as artists, we have this amazing ability to create something out of anything, to create something from scratch. And so many of us are also drawn to this idea of freedom and being able to go with the flow. Not to mention, most artists honestly have a variety of different creative fields that call their attention, that they're interested in. However, this vast amount of possibilities and options that we have often lead to paralysis, to us not doing anything at all, or doing very little in a multitude of different directions. We go wide instead of going deep with anything. The more options we have, the more difficult it is for us as humans to pick one single thing or a limited amount of things to work on, and also the more challenging it is to stick to those few things long enough to see the progress that we desire. Because we get distracted with all these other options that are around us 24 seven. And this is more a problem today than it has ever been before because 24 seven, we're intaking different forms of media. We have all of these different things that we can learn about and pursue in any given moment. And it takes just a few seconds to get that information in the palm of our hand. And don't get me wrong, it's awesome that we have all of these things available to us, but the thing is that we're unable to focus and through focus and just dedicating your effort to a few amount of things, that's how you're gonna get deeper growth. And it's no surprise that nowadays when we try to sit down and create, we feel incredibly scattered and overwhelmed and we end up doing very little and not making the progress that we have it in us to make because everything is an option now. This is why today I wanted to share a video with you on setting constraints or parameters for yourself when you're working on your art. I'm gonna be talking about why setting constraints or parameters to work in is so important how it can help you move forward faster as an artist. And I'm also going to be providing specific examples of how to do this when you're drawing or painting. If you've been part of any of my online communities for some amount of time, then maybe you're already aware of how I am a huge proponent of setting goals as an artist. I haven't always been like this. I was not a goal setter. I didn't have any clear objectives for the longest time in my life. But when I started doing this, and it's been a journey, um, when I started doing this is when I started seeing more faster progress. And this is why I have created lots of workshops and resources for you on how to set goals as an artist, smart goals, uh, how to create a learning curriculum for yourself as a self-taught artist, all of these resources that I have shared with you and that I continue creating for you. But I know that a lot of you are maybe a little bit apprehensive of setting goals or maybe goal setting and this whole idea just makes you feel a little bit ick. Or maybe you simply find it a little bit overwhelming or intimidating to uh, commit to one single project or type of artwork for a long period of time. And I understand that. And this is why I wanted to create this video to share with you today because through this practice of setting parameters and establishing kind of boundaries or a box to work within, you're able to practice focus, at least for a short period of time, enough to see some progress before moving on to the next thing. Through practicing establishing parameters for yourself when you're working on one single project or a series, or even working on filling up a sketchbook spread with a series of small drawings or paintings, you're gonna give yourself the opportunity to really get to know the subject or really get to know the medium and also get to know more about yourself along the way. You're gonna get more growth as an artist as opposed to constantly jumping around from one thing to the next. So jumping right into what it means to set constraints or parameters for yourself, specifically as an artist. Now, when you first hear of setting constraints or limits or boundaries to work within, it might seem as the opposite or the antithesis of what we're trying to do as artists, but this is not the case at all. Establishing boundaries or certain constraints for ourselves 
actually expands our creativity. It grows our skills. Limitations or constraints actually spur your creativity. It gets your gears turning in your head and makes you think of ideas that you might have otherwise never thought of. Throughout history, these parameters and boundaries, so to speak, have actually been shown to increase innovation. So just as an example, imagine that you are sitting in a room with five other people. You all have desks in front of you. You are sitting far away from each other so you can't really see what the other person is doing. Someone comes into the room and gives all of you a sheet of blank paper and a pencil and an eraser. And the person tells you guys to draw something, anything you want. You have 10 minutes. Most likely than not, by the end of those 10 minutes, you and those five other people are going to come up with a very, I don't want to say this, but boring drawing. Maybe it's of the outside of your house. Maybe it's you and your family, or maybe it's your son or your daughter if you're able to draw human figures, or maybe your pet. Probably something that is quite common or normal for you to see or to have happen in your day-to-day -day life. Most likely than not as well, at least two of those six people would have taken those entire first five minutes just to try to think of what to draw because nothing is coming to mind. And the other one or two people maybe just drew a flower or a sun or, or something that they have drawn over and over again throughout their lives that is super simple to draw, that comes easily to them and means absolutely nothing to them at the same time. It didn't even challenge them in any way. And this happens because the prompt was left too general, too open. It didn't provide any particular stimulus or path or specific ideas to work with. However, imagine being in that same situation, that same room, and instead of leaving the prompt completely open and someone telling you to draw whatever you want, you have 10 minutes, what the person does is they tell you something like, draw a woman, inside of a blue room packing a suitcase. Immediately, the gears in your head start turning. How can I convey that blue room? What is in that blue room? What does the woman look like? What does the suitcase look like? What is she packing? Is it clothes? Is it food? Is the rest of the room empty? Is she moving from the house? You're starting even to create a story or a narrative. Is she sad? Is she excited? Is she leaving her house or her partner or her family? How old is this lady? Where is she going? And what's super cool is that even though those six people are drawing something, creating a picture based on that same prompt, every single one of you is gonna create a different drawing at the end because every single person is gonna make different connections in their heads. They're going to interpret the prompt in their own way. This is something that is very challenging. This is going to push you. This is going to make you draw something and think of something that you never have before. And at the same time, you're getting to know yourself as an artist and a human because you're making all of these connections and you're progressing your creativity because you're forced to make all of these connections that you've never made before. Remember that creativity is not about coming up with something absolutely new that has never been seen before, but it's actually making connections between things that already exist. And at times, learning to connect things that are not even part of the same category. It is important to know that there is a sweet spot when it comes to setting a number or amount of constraints for yourself when you're working on art. If you set no constraints at all, then it's gonna be way too open, you're never going to decide what to work on, or you're gonna come up with something that is quite boring, that doesn't really mean anything, that doesn't really challenge you. And if you set way too many constraints, on the other hand, that is going to be way too limiting, way too frustrating, it's gonna be way too forced. You're gonna be forcing those connections. There is a sweet spot in between these two extremes. 
Think of this as like a bell curve where just setting the right amount of constraints or limitations is going to give you maximum growth. And this varies from person to person and project to project. But if you've never practiced setting constraints or limitations for you when you're working on your art, I would recommend exploring setting somewhere between two to four constraints or limitations and setting a few parameters or specific constraints for yourself doesn't only have to come in the way of specific drawing prompts or painting prompts like the one that I just shared. You can set limitations for yourself or parameters to work within in many different ways when you're working on your art. I will be providing more examples in just a bit. But if you think about it, let's just say that you are an oil painter, you paint on specific sizes of canvas, and you like painting landscapes. And let's just say that you have a specific color palette made up of eight colors that you always work with. Well, those are going to be certain parameters that you always work within because you always work within that same size of canvas, you always paint landscapes, and you always use those same eight colors. And you work within the limitations that that painting medium allows. But if you wanna switch things up, you can always decide to explore larger canvases or bringing in a wild card color into your palette or changing the perspective of those landscapes, the vantage point of the person viewing the scene or explore creating a little bit more abstraction or looseness in your work or explore bringing in more detail. It's funny how setting limits for yourself or constraints can actually yield unpredictable results and how within constraint, within limitation, there is actually absolute freedom. You choose the rules as the artist, you choose your constraints, and then within that, you're free to explore and push to your heart's content. Here are six different ideas that you can use as you're moving forward with exploring setting limits or boundaries or constraints as you're working on your drawings or your paintings. The first idea has to do with setting limits or rules for yourself in terms of time. When it comes to time, you can decide to work on a specific challenge or project for a month where you're going to be drawing something every single day for 30 or 31 days. I've also talked about timed sketching practice before, which is so incredibly powerful and something that, in my opinion, every person who is learning to draw or paint should bring into their practice at some point at least. With time sketches, I mean setting a alarm for yourself to go off at the five minute mark or 10 minute mark or 15 minute mark, depending on what it is that you're drawing. The second idea is setting constraints or limits for yourself or rules in terms of the subject itself. So you can decide to fill up a sketchbook spread with underwater animals or tools that you can find in your garage, portraits of musicians you admire, portraits of older people. You can commit to working on a series of paintings of farm animals, or cross sections of fruits, or close-ups of different objects, or creating a series of seascapes. Idea number three is setting parameters in terms of the materials or tools that you're gonna be bringing into your drawings or paintings. This can be in terms of the amount of drawing or painting mediums that you're bringing in. So if you're into just using one single drawing or painting medium, it can be just graphite or just watercolor or just pen and ink. Whereas if you're into mixed media, you can decide to always bring in two mediums or three mediums and never go over that amount. But then what specific mediums are you bringing in? Is it going to be pen and ink and watercolor? Is it going to be watercolor and gouache? Is it going to be graphite and colored pencil? In terms of materials and tools, you can also challenge yourself to create a series of paintings using only one same paintbrush. Or you can challenge yourself to always bring in a palette knife into these new acrylic paintings that you're creating so that you can practice using that new tool. Idea number four is set a constraint for yourself in terms of art style or level of realism to abstraction. Limit yourself in terms of the amount of detail that you're bringing into your drawings or paintings. Commit to using a certain amount of stylization and simplification 
in those drawings or paintings that you're creating. Or inversely to this, if you want to practice your realism, then commit to creating five or 10 different drawings or paintings with higher levels of realism. Idea number five in terms of how you can set constraints for yourself when you're working on your art, and this one has to do with use of color. You can decide to create a series of pieces using a limited color palette. Maybe you're gonna challenge yourself to create 10 sketches in your sketchbook using only three colors, or you're gonna be using one of those tried and true color schemes used by artists throughout history, like a triad or a tetrad, or complementary color schemes or analogous color schemes. You can practice creating monochromatic or grayscale drawings or paintings so that you can practice your values. You can also set constraints for yourself in terms of the format of the substrate that you're drawing or painting on. So you may decide to only use square formats for a certain period of time or very long, more panoramic view kind of rectangles or circles or triangles or only working in very small, teeny tiny miniature pieces for a certain amount of time or larger pieces for a certain amount of time. All of those would be constraints in terms of format. And the last idea I have for you would be awesome and super fun for those of you who are into still life or objects. And this would be creating a series of drawings or paintings in your sketchbook or larger pieces where you are just drawing or painting objects that would be part of a specific scene. So objects that would be found in an office or in a bedroom or in a forest or in your handbag. So these are just a few of the many different ways that you can set parameters to work in. And you can even combine any of these. For example, you can decide to maybe work on a series of 10 pen and wash pieces where you're only going to be drawing forest animals. And maybe you're gonna also decide to bring in certain constraints in terms of color usage. Maybe you decide to always use the same square color scheme for all 10 animal pieces. These rules are going to leave things way less open for you so that you can actually jump right in and start. You're gonna have your format already decided. You're gonna have what type of animal already decided. You're gonna have your color scheme already decided. So there is no overthinking or rumination. You can get right to work and you can push yourself and explore within that. So just to finish up, realize that limiting your choices and committing to specific parameters can help you not only get the ball rolling when you're feeling stuck with your art and don't know how to begin, but it can also grow your skills tremendously and help you come up with ideas that you might have otherwise never thought of before. So give it a go for yourself. I highly, highly recommend it. And you just might be super surprised with how enjoyable it is and how much progress you're able to make. Give it a go. Let me know how it goes for you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Enjoy your art practice and see you soon. Bye.